1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. It's Thursday, 20th May 2021, and you're listening to the latest update from today's 1MDB Tanor trial by the Malaysian Insight. I'm Patrick Teal. <laughs> The court heard today that former One Malaysia Development Burhat Chief Executive Officer Mohammad Hazim Abdul Rahman was passive and took little action to address serious issues at the company's board meetings. Ex-Prime Minister Najib Razak, 67, is currently on trial for four counts of abuse of power and 21 counts of money laundering involving 2.28 billion ringgit in public funds. His defence lawyers questioned Hazem and suggested that the person who siphoned 1MDB's money was businessman Lo Tech Joe. <coughs> the trial resumed today with Defence Counsel 1 Aizuddin 1 Mohammed cross examining former 1MDB CEO Mohammed Hazem Abdul Rahman. The lawyer grilled Hazem for his passiveness when ABBA Investments PJS Limited did not raise their part of the 3 billion US dollars for a joint venture with 1MDB in 2013 to develop the Tun Razak Exchange or TRX project. According to the minutes of the 1MDB board meeting on the 27th of January 2014, Hazem had informed the board that there was no progress on the joint venture. Defence Counsel 1 Aizuddin 1 Muhammad asked Hazem, so, apart from just saying that there were no developments, did you brief the board on anything else concerning the joint venture? Hazem said he cannot recall. The lawyer again referred to the minutes. Hazem had told the board that he discussed with the CEO of ABBA, who had no objections to 1MDB pursuing other investments for the TRX project. One Aizuddin asked, Who is the CEO of ABBA? Hazem replied, Muhammad Badawi al Husseini. The lawyer continued his cross examination with the 10th prosecution witness. So, you have met Muhammad? I can't remember specifically meeting him on this, but there may have been a short discussion, Hazem said. Contrary to what you had been telling this court, you said Joe Lowe was taking care of everything. You did play some active role. You did have some sort of discussion with ABBA. I did, yeah. The lawyer continued, During this discussion you had with the ABBA CEO, did you ask him, when is your 3 billion US dollars coming? Because we got ours since March. I can't recall. Were you asked by Joe Lowe not to raise it? No, not exactly. So your failure to raise it with ABBA CEO is due to your own inaction? No, not exactly. I mean, I can actively pursue them, but they did not want to take part and raise the money. What can I do? Hazem said that ABBA was not serious about the joint venture and Hazem could not force them to raise their end of the funds. One Aizuddin also showed Hazem the astonishing fact that there was only a 60,000 US dollar balance out of the 2.7 billion US dollars in 1MDB subsidiary, the 1MDB Global Investments Limited or 1MDB GIL's account after a few months. 1MDB GIL was a special purpose vehicle set up to issue a 3 billion US dollar bond for the joint venture between 1MDB and ABBA. From the bond that it had issued in March of 2013, 1MDB GIL received 2.7 billion US dollars after paying a high fee of 9.3% of the funds raised to the bond's underwriter, Goldman Sachs. One Aizurin asked Hazem, 
You would agree that as of the board's meeting on the 9th of December 2013, the balance in 1MDB GIL's account was merely 60 million US dollars? Hazem replied, 60,000 US dollars. The lawyer said this was astonishing. In Jahazim, from 3 billion US dollars or from the 2.7 billion US dollars, it has come to 60,000 US dollars and this was never mentioned to the board? Hazem said no. The lawyer asked, do you know who benefited from these purported transfers? Who controlled all this money? Hazem said fugitive businessman Lo Tik Jo, also known as Jo Lo. The Defence Council then took some time going through the full statement of facts by the Singapore Attorney General on a trial in Singapore. Falcon Private Bank's Singapore branch manager, Jens Fred Sturzenegger, was convicted in relation to millions of US dollars originating from 1MDB and flowing to and through Falcon Private Bank accounts of four entities allegedly controlled by Joe Lowe. One Isodin asked Hazim, would you agree that Joe Lowe was transferring the funds as if it was his own money? Hazem said, yes. Would you agree that Joe Lowe had a habit of sending copied and pasted documents as alleged by bank officials of Falcon? One Isodin asked again. And Hazem agreed. The lawyer then put it to Hazem that he did not inform the board that the funds were siphoned because Hazem was protecting Joe Lowe, to which Hazem disagreed and denied working with Joe Lowe. One Isodin later told the court that this portion of the cross-examination was very relevant because it forms part of their defence that the real thief is Joe Lowe. Lead Defence Counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah added to say, Joe Lowe is like an octopus with plenty of tentacles reaching out to everybody around the globe. The 1MDB Tanor trial will continue on Monday before Judge Colin Lawrence Sequeira at the Kuala Lumpur High Court. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Haley Chung Wee Kee and I'm Patrick Teo.